ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the first time at the Tinkation. Celebrate with me as I invite Dr. Demola Shogule. Can we celebrate him, please? As he speaks for another 15 to 20 minutes on creating the world of possibilities. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, thank you. Um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Um, I bring you good tidings from Stambik IBTC. I would like to thank the organizers. I would like to thank the um, Ubon King's um, Foundation, the Board of Trustees. Um, Madam, you are doing a very good job. And, and the grace of God will continue to multiply upon your life. Um, I came across um, Dr. King um, on the board of Nigerian South African Chamber of Commerce. And, um, and it was just for a very few, you know, just few years, unfortunately. And I remember when there was a problem, um, NSA, not NSAS, before NSAS, xenophobic and all those things. Um, and, you know, the business community in Nigeria, especially, you know, some of the South African business communities, um, ran into trouble, you know, with students and the rest. We had to rely on Dr. King's, you know, interest, connection, network, and everything. And he told us, done. And that was what happened. Um, so what we are seeing today, I will tell you, um, is a reflection of how deeply rooted Dr. King's passion for this country is. Because, um, you know, if I, I will use an analogy using a, a bamboo tree. If you plant a bamboo tree for many years, the bamboo tree may just maintain one particular height. Three, four, five years, you will think nothing is happening. A lot is happening. It's because the bamboo tree, the tap root, is looking for underground aquifer. When the bamboo gets to that, when the tap root gets to that aquifer, I can bet you, you can go beside the bamboo tree and be reading. On an hourly basis, it will be growing because it's got to that point. So what I'm saying is that the foundation, right, that Dr. King has laid is the same way you look at the building, Burj Khalifa in, in, in Dubai, 50 meters down. Because of that foundation, that building can go as high as possible. So what we are enjoying today is the legacy of the foundation that Dr. King had laid. And it's not how long <laughs> Jesus lived for how many years, 30 something years. Yeah. But we are still discussing 2,000 years later, we are still discussing today. So um, thank you for holding you know, the fort, for keeping you know, um, 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 the torch, for keeping the flag flying. I've been given a very simple topic, and I like the, you know, the way we started. It was as if um, we are sharing notes from Dr. Mumba you know, um, to Just Ibe, just the same. But the way I will start is that, look, um, I want all our participants. Um, I read somewhere, because in the course of this week, I, had to, I, was, I was given the privilege to address Jambite in Unilac. Over three or 4,000 of them in multi-purpose hall. And I had to ask them from the beginning. I said, look, I read somewhere, I think it was Albert Einstein that said that, look, imagination is greater than knowledge. Because knowledge, you are restricted. Somebody will have to pass it to you. You have to make an effort. When it comes to imagination, you are free. Just close your eyes. And just imagine. Which is very important. So you are not limited, you are not restricted. So what I want to do is to make sure that, look, let us imagine Nigeria. Let us imagine Africa, right? That will be at the forefront of the fourth industrial revolution. We just imagine it. Imagine two, three million Nigerians setting up their own whatever you want to call it, in the outer space. Two, three million, not one person. Somebody will be saying, are you guys daydreaming? But you have to imagine things, to go beyond the confines, right, of the limitations that have been imposed on us by so many things, including our parents, including tradition. It's very important. So 
I, I, I said that, look, in order to break the highs, let me show you, you know, some, some pictures. I don't know whether they, they can come up the screen. Um, excuse me, this, this, this is freezing. Um, and I would like to just run very quickly. Because um, for me, I always prefer to talk straight from my heart. Because it's always very, very important to do that. But at times, you know, presenter, I mean, organizer will say, look, what, where is the presentation? Show me. Right. So is it up or down? Sideways. Okay. Very good. So I, I said, look, let's, let's look at, okay, maybe I'm too fast for this. Let's look at what you have on the screen. And you see three pictures, right? On the left, you'll be wondering. You'll just be seeing what? Environmental pollution, block drainage systems, you know, dirt. That's what you will see. The one in the middle, you see traffic. Again, pollution, waste of time, lost appointment. That's what you will see. The other one on the extreme right, <laughs> coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> Sickness. Um, everybody covering themselves. We came here, hand sanitizers, mask, shield, everything. You know, some other people can look at this and they see something differently. And that is the important thing. They will see something differently. Look at the pictures again. Just look at the pictures again. So when you see the picture, you are seeing something else which is very important. You are seeing opportunities. Then immediately, your mind will start to, to, to operate, which is very important. Because don't forget, you cannot come to a forum like this. And I, I remember Madame said, so you can't come to a forum like this and live the same way. It will be a sheer waste of time. Time is too precious, ladies and gentlemen. We've got 24 hours in a day. Some of us went through so many things to be in front of you now, today. Some of you have gone through, through so many things to be here. Don't waste your time. Look at the pictures again, and you'll see what you, something different. From the first one, just imagine. You are seeing what? Refuse collection and transportation. You are seeing waste segregation, waste recycling, landfilling, organic manure. The list is endless. Do you understand? The one in the middle, you see errand service business. Can you imagine? Express delivery. Why somebody will be cursing in traffic? Some other people will be seeing other opportunities. You are seeing alternative transport business. I remember before COVID, we were in China, 2019. A matrix of mine um, that works for Standard Bank you know, in China. We landed in Ikeja Airport together before COVID-19 broke out. When the guys saw the congestion, please bear with me quote and unquote, at the airport. This is Ikeja. And he saw the traffic at Oshodi, third mainland bridge. The guy said he, he likes this place. He said, I like this place. Why? Opportunity. He told me, he said, look, imagine if... He said, he said for him that imagine if you, you didn't have to come out of the airport. Given the congestion, given the traffic and all those things, that is it possible to imagine that you just go three, four, seven, I mean seven, eight levels below and you take a fast train, underground fast train, and you come out in VI within 10 minutes, within five minutes. So he was seeing opportunities while we are sweating inside the traffic. So don't forget the topic, creating a world of possibilities. And it's very important for us, to, coronavirus again. Look at what you are seeing on the right. Opportunities for face mask production, sanitizer production, decontamination services, digital platform solutions, those are just very few. 
opportunities. Do you understand? So please, I want you to open your mind and stop seeing problems. I was asked to come and address some, I mean, um, late last year, <laughs> and I was talking about Nigeria, and the, um, the, 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 the minister for ITI from South Africa, industry, trade, and investment. After we finished, he asked the ambassador that I should send my presentation to, because I spoke for almost 30 or 45 minutes. I didn't talk about the problems, so I was talking about opportunities. He said he couldn't believe it. It's a question of what are you seeing? Are you seeing problems? Are you seeing challenges? We wake up every day to solve problems. So don't complain. When you say a challenge is an opportunity for you, I mean, people will say to blow. Just go back and think, and we'll go through that very quickly. So how do you develop a problem-solving mindset? I will run through very quickly. Be ever curious. Don't let people say they say curiosity kills the cat or something like that. It's meant to cage you. You remember what I said at the beginning? There are times, some of the things that we've learned from the, from, I mean, from the time we were very young, they were meant to restrict us. They say curiosity kills the cat. But you have to be curious. Do you understand? Natural human beings or natural biases in decision making, including confirmation, availability, and anchoring biases often cause us to shut down the range of solutions too early. Always be curious. Ask why. Why, why are we going through this door? Why, why not that one? Always. Tolerate ambiguity and stay humble. Do you understand? Tolerate ambiguity and stay humble. <laughs> The board, you know, in the board meeting of a multinational, oil and gas, you know, somebody asked them a question, you know, an analyst, you know, a consultant asked them a question. Among all the board members here, how many of you, all of them, you know, chemical engineering, petroleum engineering, reservoir engineering, nobody had a background for ambiguous thinking. Say, so who read? <laughs> Anthropology here, nobody. <laughs> Who read philosophy, first degree, nobody. Do you understand? Who is going to throw ambiguity into the logic? Nobody. So tolerate ambiguity and stay humble. Take a dragonfly high view. Do you understand? Please, if you can Google it. You can see how a dragonfly, how, how it operates. It sees the hole in a, in, a, in, a, in a place. It sees a flower. It stays out, and it looks inside. So don't be too much into the problem. Come out of the problem and look at it from outside. Very, very important. Very, very important. I think I, I have the privilege. I, I did part of the training programs I went through in my undergraduate, postgraduate program. I did remote sensing, satellite imagery. 2004, I, I came from Antony Village. I parked to Badore, 2004. And the traffic was heavy, as far back as 2004. From Antony Village, I could, get, I could get to BI in one hour, if, I, if I, I could wake up early. From Badore, I was struggling to get to VI. <laughs> in one hour. So you have to stay out of the problem and look at it. Part of it was to say that, look, I have to check the satellite imagery of this axis. The land area on both sides of the road, unbelievable. And I say, at this point, this place is yet to be built up. One hour, we are still struggling. So as far back as 2004, I knew that even a 10-lane express whatever will not solve the problem. So don't be in the problem. Come out, look at it dispassionately. You understand? Then you'll be able to. So I, I, I spent only one year. I moved. To, I move out. This is not to say, but the important thing is that you have to come out to see. It's always very important. If you are too connected to the problem, you become part of the problem. 
okay? Pursue, you know, occurring behavior, tap into collective intelligence. What do we mean collective intelligence? Somebody said that, look, post-COVID world, three things for organizations that will, that will thrive significantly. Three, one of them is trust. The second is collective intelligence. The What you are enjoying here is collective intelligence. By the time, just, I mean, the lady that spoke, uh, just, by the time she's spoken right from her heart, former president, I'm enjoying that benefit. You don't need to get to Harvard to know those things. Tell you straight, okay? Take advantage of it. Show and tell to drive action, which is very important. So let me move on very quickly. You know, because we've seen I will just I will, I will show something. Now you can see you can think differently, deliberately. Because you've seen the first two slides. Now you won't see this as a problem. You'll just be seeing opportunities, which is very important. Let's let's move on. For us, when you look at opportunities around us in Nigeria, I don't want to repeat them, but it's good for you to bear in mind. Because I remember one of the speakers. One of the presenters was saying, look, you have to look at Africa. Nigeria, we are talking about Nigeria within the context of Africa. We are the largest economy in Africa. Of course, some people will run away. But some people will have to stay to deal it. The largest economy, you can't get it better. Over 200 million people, you can't get it better. It will tick all those boxes. 77% of the population below the age of about 35 you can't get it better. Demographically, superb. Natural resources, you can't get it better. Do you understand? So I'm, I'm trying to let you know that we have 11 cities in Nigeria with population above 1 million. Some countries, <laughs> they will do anything to get this. You just think that some people are giving you green cards for nothing. Some people are saying this, so you come to Canada for nothing. Nigeria has 11 cities with 1 million population and above. Some countries will do anything to have that. So why you see that as a problem? Some are, they, are, they, they will do anything to get it. It's a lot of possibilities, what you can do. With cities with over 1 million population, Nigeria has 11. And in the, in the GDP, you are talking about a Greek, Everything that you need to deliver sustainable agricultural program, don't let me even say agri, let me say agribusiness. We've got in Nigeria, you have hungry people who are ready to, 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 to eat. The population is there. The population is youthful. What else do you need? You have rainfall, two seasons of rainfall in the south, one season in the north. What else do you need? River Niger, River Benue. You've got everything. But some people will be complaining about all those things. That is Nigeria for you. Now, think outside of Nigeria. Africa has 1.2 billion population. So we are talking about Af uh, um, AFT, CFTA. Imagine if you can do something that can go across Nigeria to other African countries. Those are the opportunities. Those are domestic. I'm giving you domestic opportunities around us. Now, let's look at opportunities, you know, global, global opportunities. There are 30 jobs that will be very key by 2020, I mean, 2030. Augmented reality, architect, autonomous vehicle operator, you know, avatar relationship manager, many of them. You know, there's something they call digital archaeologist. Can you see? Digital archaeologist. You know, you are talking about future guide, global sourcing managers, global system architect, grassroots researcher. These are some of those, those things that, you know, opportunities that, that, will, that will open up. And we need to focus our minds on them. Now, living in the age of digi uh, um, digital, Talking about living in the, in, in, the, in the digital age. First industrial revolution, we know. Steam-based engine. Some people enjoy that benefit. 
Second Industrial Revolution, third. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the fourth industrial revolution. And you remember what we are saying. Imagine Nigeria or Nigerians being able to play significantly here. That's why at times some of us, we are very sad. When some of those things that we've made some strides on, or we've made strides in, you know, whether it's in, of course, the, everything has the good side and the bad side. Is it crypto and all those things? Once there is a barrier, it stops, you know, creativity. But Nigeria is already, we have to plug into the fourth industrial revolution. And we are talking about whether you call it cloud computing, you call it um, um, uh, mobile technologies, you call it machine, uh, machine to machine uh, learning, internet of things. Now, if it's not fast, if it's not seamless, if it's not data driven, if it's not smart, if it's not connected, if it's not automated, it belongs to the past. Take it or leave it, it belongs to the past. And that's the way we are meant to operate. So, living in the digital age, talking about digital economy, this is where opportunities have now become limitless for the youth, to be quite frank. Limitless. And I can, I can tell you, look, every day I see examples. Every day. This is not to encourage, you know, um, um, somebody to say, look, at, you must immigrate at all costs. Do you know that a staff of ours in Stambik IBTC, that was, it was, he, he joined during COVID-19, at the beginning of COVID-19, he joined some of the global, you know, data analysts to predict the pace at which coronavirus infection will, will, will take place in U.S. And it was counted among the top 10 or 15. And he was doing it consistently on a fortnight basis. <laughs> this is 2022. Last year, January last year, he got a job outside the country in Italy. And he said that, oh, you will, will have to go and get a visa. They opened the embassy on water quarantine for him to get a visa. I said, but there is coronavirus. Well, how will you get visa? <laughs> they opened the embassy on water quarantine. Italian embassy is there. It's very close to our office. For just one Nigerian. Because I said, but you allow COVID to say, no, no, you must resume. January 20th is gone. So what am I telling you? I'm saying you are no longer limited. Right. The country's digital economy is taking shape and undermining conventional notions about how businesses are, are structured. How firms interact and how consumers obtain services, information, and goods. This is happening already. I wouldn't like to mention names. There's a company in Nigeria that came to Nigeria and the company was meant to, first year, to have about 300, you know, I would say 300, you know, scientists, analysts. They were meant to be providing top engineering support to, to U.S.-based companies. Online, they chose Nigeria for so many reasons. Youthful, youthful population, right? We have many graduates. High unemployment. Nigerians are very, very smart. The guy told me that Nigerians are too smart. They don't allow their staff to come into their building with their smartphone. Because they are so smart that, okay, whatever you can see, no problem. But you can't come with your gadget. Thank you. 
Thank you. So now we are talking about, you know, inclusive growth, poverty reduction, jobs and efficiency. I've just given you an example. So some of these things are happening. And it's good for you to know that there are possibilities. Okay? Living in the age of, you know, living in a digital age, skill outlook. I decided to bring this so that you get to know. This is from World Economic Forum. And these are the skill sets for 2022 that will be very relevant. For 2022, that will be very relevant. <laughs> and you know the beauty? I discussed, I think early this week, we were discussing, and somebody was saying that they need to set up something in Nigeria where you, you, as you are schooling, schooling, and working. So if somebody is at you know, 300, 400 level in the university, you can also be working. So you are well engaged. From 200, 300 level, you're already working, you're already coding, you're already doing so many things. And you do it online. And some of these things, you are not restricted. You can do two, three jobs at the same time. And you can create for yourself, which is very important. So these skill sets, analytical thinking, and innovation, you know, some of them are growing skill sets. Some of them, they are trending. What you don't want, ladies and gentlemen, to be on the side of the declining you know, column. I'm not saying those things are wrong, but the, the important thing is that that's not the job somebody is going to pay you $7,000 know, for working part-time. $7,000 per month, and you are still a student. Or somebody pays you $10,000 per month, and you are an intern. <laughs> And you, are, and you are staying somewhere <laughs> in Baduri. It's massive. But you need to stay on those two sides, which is very important. Now, let's look at the resources at, at, at our fingertips. This, this slide is very key. In, in the 90s, well, let's say, you know, at the beginning of last century anyway, knowledge doubling every century. That was a very slow pace. In the 1940s, knowledge doubling almost every 25 years. In the 80s, knowledge doubling every 12 to 13 months. 2020, IBM predicts knowledge doubling every 11 hours. Or every, I mean, every 11 hours, yes. So what does that tell you? It means that even when you, when you go, go on the internet, even when you Google something, you can pick pieces of information that will be very relevant to you. Because so many things have so happened and people are documenting and documenting. And the important thing is that you should be able to tap into this. Look at all the resources at your fingertips. 40 years ago, these things were not there. They were never there. So <laughs> when I stood in front of about 4,000 or 3,000 students of Unilag, I told them, I said, guys, you have no reason to fail. You have no reason to go through this university, three, four-year program, five-year program, and you, you, you didn't make it. You have no reason not to have first class. Because some of us did not go. To, we didn't have anybody to tutor us. We didn't have anybody to encourage us. We didn't have anybody to show us the ropes. They didn't show us the way. But we were able to do it. Now you are being given. I, said, I told them, I said, look, it's the same way when somebody says this, they, you know, in those days. Why can't we publish the syllabus? If you are fortunate, you have the marking scheme. How can you fail? Guys, can somebody give you the syllabus, the question, and the marking scheme, and you fail an exam? There is no basis. You only need to show up in the exam and you pass. You have the syllabus, you, have the, you know the questions, and you have the marking scheme. Why will you fail? So what we are doing today 
is to show you the marking scheme. That's what we are doing today. We are showing you anybody that comes up here to address you, he's showing you the marking scheme. You have no reason to fail. And you have no reason not to succeed. Which is very, very important. Now, let me move on very quickly. Resources at your fingertips again. You know, when you look at what we've got there, we are talking about, we are talking about, you know, beyond having fun. Some people will spend two, three hours. <laughs> are we on Facebook? <laughs> For God's sake. <laughs> do you know what you can do within one minute? And that's why I like this slide. Do you know that every minute of the day, you have over almost 6 million searches on Google. One minute. Then you will just go and spend three hours doing nothing. You are wasting time. So beyond having fun online and owning the latest mobile devices, you need to see the possibilities and opportunities open to you in a digital world. So look at digital world as an avenue for opportunities, as a tool. I hope you are getting it. That is very important. Now, big things are possible. Be creative. And when we say you should be creative, we are saying, look, inspiration is important, vision is important, idea, brainstorm, imagination. Do not settle for status quo. You remember when I came, I said, if you ask a question, why are we going through that door? Be curious. Don't settle for status quo. Don't let them say, oh, you can only stay here. Who said so? Ask them who said so. In my office, <laughs> when they tell me something, I say, is it part of Ten Command? <laughs> I say, was it gazetted? Let me see it. The person who wrote it, who wrote that line, had already even retired. Why can't we change it? You pose the question to the person. Why must we resume 8 a.m.? Why? Ask the question. I, I will tell the graduate trainees. Yes. No, you tell. Because you, you have to break the barrier. When we are onboarding graduate, tra graduate trainees, having gone through our Blue Academy, I will tell them, ask questions. Ask the person, your boss, why? Why should I come to office 8 a.m.? Justify it. Justify it. You are not being difficult. You are not being difficult. You are interrogating everything. You are questioning everything. It's to reset. You need that. If you, start, if you settle for status quo, you can't make progress. You can't make progress. If, you, if they tell you nobody has ever passed this course, forget it. They are wasting time. Why? So, again, I will repeat. Don't settle for status quo. The, 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 the digital world is very big. Your creative process, if you go through creative process, look at you know, the, the, the levels there. Prepare, incubate. You incubate things in your mind. Illuminate, evaluate, then you implement. Very, very important for you to do that. And there is a slide there where we talk about you know, big things are possible. There is a difference between being creative and being innovative. And I will explain very quickly. Because at times, you know, you want to mix up the two. There is no point. Innovation. Innovation is the introduction of new or improved good services processes. That's innovation. Creativity is the use of imagination. You remember when I came up here, I was telling you imagination is key. It's the use of imagination or original ideas to create something. You have to imagine it. I remember one of our bosses, um, Mrs. Shola Devi Bora, um, you know, at our group ESCO. She said that she wanted to teach us whether it's uh, teamwork, you know, so many things, team dynamics. We decided to leave Nigeria to go and, to go and climb Mount Kilimanjaro, 5,600 meters above sea level. Mount Kilimanjaro is actually in Tanzania. It's not in Kenya. So we got to Arusha. Those who are meant to be like porters, those who are meant to accompany us one by one, they kept telling us at the beginning, at the base, 
that you have to climb the mountain in your mind. <laughs> and I was wondering, what is this? Why, why will I climb the mountain in my mind? <laughs> They say you must imagine yourself on top of Mount Kilimanjaro. When you get to the peak, it is called Uhuru. 5,600 meters above sea level. That is almost six kilometers. So imagine when you are on, um, maybe from the Long Bridge on Lagos, uh, 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 Ibadan, up to certain level. Just imagine six kilometers and put it straight up. That is how high Mount Kilimanjaro is. They kept asking us, imagine that you've climbed it in your mind. That is power of imagination. If you cannot imagine it, you can't deliver it. If you cannot imagine it, you can't deal it. Okay? So creativity is the use of imagination. Then when you come to innovation, it's related to implementation. Creativity is related again to imagination. So you have to imagine yourself being successful. I, don't, I mean, I, I've told some of our guys, you know, the graduate trainees again in Stambik this. Because they will ask me, two or three questions they will ask me after I've spoken. Is that they will ask me for my age? They will ask me how long have I been working in Stambik IVTC? <laughs> so I will tell them, I will, I will answer them very quickly. But one thing I, was, I also tell them, I say, look, from the day one I got there, I imagine myself being the MD. It's not a sin to imagine. Don't forget, I'm not like Joseph, not that I was telling everybody. Oh. You can see it's different. So I'm trying to separate the two. Because if you don't know how to keep your mouth shut, you'll be in trouble. But from day one, day one, I imagine myself being the MD. Do you understand? You have to imagine yourself being successful. You have to imagine yourself as an entrepreneur. You have to imagine yourself being a creative person then you work on it. The difference between what you've imagined and now is the implementation. It's the series of things that you have to go through. Okay? It can be measured. You can measure innovation, guys. You cannot measure creativity. You can, you know, innovation follows creativity. Creativity precedes innovation. And that's very important. You look for opportunity, look for idea, invention, then you commercialize. Big things are possible in Nigeria. Again, <laughs> you know, for some of us who are, you know, when you talk to somebody, those who are looking at Nigeria from outside. And I, I, I've, I've spoken somewhere, and I, I told them, even I think Aliko also said it somewhere. Look, I said, how come some companies got to Nigeria and they've never left? Do you know that some companies have been in Nigeria for over 100 years? Do you know that? Some companies, you know, Coca-Cola got to Nigeria 70 years ago. The first bottle of Coca-Cola was produced in a dungeon of mainland hotel in Ebutemeta. They've been here for 70 years. During the civil war, they were here. How come they didn't leave? Do you think they are crazy? <laughs> they are not crazy. Do, do you understand? What we have here is very, very difficult to replicate anywhere in the world. Very, very difficult. Right. So, look at the possibilities. Big things are happening. Despite COVID-19, despite all the noise, do you know that Nigeria has been able to produce authentic unicorns? in the digital economy. Authentic, we are talking about authentic. An authentic unicorn is a company that over a period of 10 years, starting the company, within 10 years of starting the company, the company is able to get to what? Over 1 billion US dollars valuation. We've got them in Nigeria. Flutterwave is one of them. Okay? We've got InterSwitch. And others are coming up. You are seeing OP. You can complain, oh, traffic in Lagos, Moblet, Tricycle, Okada. No Okada. Some people, they are seeing opportunities. OP is already a unicorn in Nigeria. And you've got, look, look at that list. 
MTN is a unicorn within that context. These are key players who are doing so many things within that space. Okay? I've used many case studies, you know, I've mentioned Stambik IBTC several times. I don't like to dwell too much on this. Um, you know, the future of learning is digital. Um, we've done, we've put down so many things that we use there. Um, we've got, you know, Stambik IBTC uni uh, University scholarship, you know, because I like, you know, when you call on Nigerian students, you know, the response was very good. I felt, look, we should share this with them. Um, guys, connect to some of the guys on the campus. Um, you know, let them know about some of these things. There's what we call DICEP G, uh, Digital Skill Empowerment Program, you know, where, you know, any of the, any of the guys, you know, that, that, that is able to get certification, you know, for specific, you know, skill sets. And they are immediately employable. Employable globally, including Stambik IBTC. And um, please, spread the news. Um, it's very important because we believe that, look, the, the, we are passionate about manpower development. We are passionate about this country. We are passionate about, about the continent. And, and we think that we should be at the forefront of those who are trying to drive you know, this continent and this country to ride on the fourth industrial revolution, you know, to create value you know, and to extract value you know, for common good. Okay? So a, a, another case study, you know, which I would like to share very quickly in Stambik IBTC, we've also got, you know, robots. Um, we got to one of the board meetings. One of the board members said, how come we are naming our robots? We are giving them foreign names. You know, so we are calling one Gina and all those things. So we said, look, we will look for Nigerian names. But one of the things I would like to mention very quickly is that it's, it's incredible. There was a particular exercise that it takes a staff a whole day Account opening forms, a staff will do 20 a whole day to verify, to check, and to onboard those customers. A staff will do 20 a day. When we set up, you know, this robot, the robot was doing those 20 accounts in 60 seconds. It's incredible. It's only when they shut down the server in Central Bank, midnight, because you have to connect to the server also to check some of the data that the robot will, will slow down. So what am I saying? And somebody developed this. Some people, we have people who are developing this every day. So I'm trying to let you know that, look, technology or the fourth industry does not, lead, does not necessarily lead to unemployment. It changes the skill set that is required. Some people are programming this every day. So what a staff will do, or what a staff was doing, 20 accounts per day, the robot will do it in 60 seconds. It's incredible. So I'm encouraging all of us, you know, plug into the fourth industrial revolution, plug into the new age, the digital economy. You know, even within a Greek, you can still automate so many things, you know, and, and it, should be, it, should, it should be okay. So, guys, uh, I would like to leave you with this um, because this is very important. That slide is the last slide I've got. Um, I didn't know the, the name of the person, but very, very simple. If you like aesthetics, design. If you like fine things, front end, make sure you are in the front end. If you like things depending on you, back end. <laughs> If you like calculations plus data, data science and analytics. If you like thinking of ways to make something better, growth manager. If you are really good at making friends and business oriented, business developer. If you can manage crowd, community manager. Tech is wide and not just about coding alone. This is very important. Two more things I will leave. Um, because of the, you know, madam, the way you started, and I was inspired. Everything I've told you, they are efforts. There is this very, it, it, the most, I would say, is the most important book ever written. In that book, there is a passage there. The passage says that the horse is prepared against the day of battle. Victory is of the Lord. 
that victory that is of the Lord, you get it by two major things. Grace and mercy. So what I've taught you now, what, what I've mentioned, everything I've said now, it has to do with preparing the horse against the day of battle. What gives you victory? Right, is the grace and mercy of God. So, and there is a passage in that book again that says, it's not for him that we let or run it, but of God who has shown mercy. So, for me to be standing in front of you today, it has to do with the mercy of God. There are many of my friends, colleagues, <laughs> they are first class. So, you need mercy of God to move. You need grace of God to move. So, we can do this side, which is to get you prepared. But please, don't downplay the grace and the mercy of God. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Wow. We have a gift? Okay. No. So let's wait for it. Yes, we have a brand new gift for the speaker. Very much. Thank you. My responsibility much. to hand everything Ole. in my life to you so that you can take over this earth. If I go and I don't hand over the most irresponsible part and I don't hand over. Once more, please put your hands together for Dr. Demola Shogunle. That was amazing, amazing.